We're going to do one more example. We have a graph here. We're going to analyze this graph by doing depth first search, starting at Q. So we start at Q. We colored these blue to signify that we were starting. We go down to S, we go down to V, we go down to W. Let's also fill in our discovery times. We'd start with a 1, and then a 2, and then a 3, and then a 4. We also should fill in our tree edges as we did that. We go Q to S, S to V, and V to W. Notice I did that much faster. We also have this edge here, which connects from W to an ancestor. We know it's an ancestor because of the fact that it is currently gray. So that is a back edge. And we are then done with W, so we finish W. And we finish V, because there's also nowhere else to go from V. Then we finish S, but there are places to go from S, so let's switch our coloring of these to be finished. And now, from Q, we can also go down to T. So let's do what we did before, we go to T, and then from there we go to X, and then from X we go to Z. And we let's fill in our times as well. So we have a discovery time of 8, a discovery time of 9, and a discovery time of 10. And then we also should fill in our tree edges. So we went along these edges there. And then we go from Z back to X along this edge. And that is another back edge. Once we find that back edge, we then can backtrack all the way up, so we go all the way back up to Q, because there are no other edges from any of these vertices. So we finish Z, we finish X, we finish T, and then we go up to Q, and there's nowhere to go from Q. There's an edge pointing into it, but nowhere to go from it. So we are then done with Q. So we finish that, but depth first search doesn't stop there. It goes to the next thing in new, uh, alphabetical order, and we'll continue from there. So we go over to R, and start exploring from there. Notice this gets a 15. We're starting our search again. And then we go to the next thing in alphabetical order. So we're going to go to U and then Y. So let's draw in our edges as we do that. And then we try to go from Y over to Q. So we go along this way. And this is what we called a cross edge before. A cross edge because it's going from one tree to another tree. A depth first search doesn't actually generate a tree, but a forest. We can tell that because if we fill in our discovery times, we get a 16, then a 17. There is no overlap between the 17 and the 1 and 14. We know automatically. Alternatively, we went from a gray node to a red node, which meant it was one of our last two types. It was either a forward or cross edge. Cross edges cross across these different trees. So then there is nowhere else to go from Y, so we finish Y. And then we finish U, so we fill those in. Doot, doot. And then from R, we could theoretically try to go along its remaining edge. However, we've already discovered Y. This is a forward edge, an edge that's not part of the tree, but could have theoretically been part of the tree. So it goes from a gray node to a black node. And we then will finish R. So we color that in red, and we are now done. In case we want to identify them, the edges that we identified were that WS, so WS, and ZX were back edges. The edge from Y to Q was a cross edge, and the edges from R to Y was a forward edge. These specific words can be useful in various applications. We can talk about a couple of them as we go. The most important ones for us are that back edges will identify cycles for us. If you notice, all of the back edges identified a cycle within the graph. The Forward edges in a directed graph don't mean that there are cycles. In a undirected graph, they will identify cycles. So the directedness of the graph will help you identify whether or not a forward edge is useful or not.